Jonathan Gresham is said to have cussed out Tony Khan and requested his release from Ring of Honor. Another Ring of Honor star is also gone following Death Before Dishonor. And we take a look at the scrapped plans for a major AEW star's debut, which have been revealed. More on that in just a bit. Hello everyone, Jack and Ross with the first of multiple news videos today. There's lots of news to There's get through. There's three news videos today. So mm. come back for number two and number three. It's massive. But uh, first of all, we're going to talk about... That. So there was this Death Before Dishonor show, the Ring of Honor one, but under the Tony Khan umbrella. Mm. And there's been a lot of fallout from just this one show. Well, it's like Tony Khan's got his paintbrush and just put his paint on somebody else's shed. Oh, you know what I, mean? I like that metaphor. You know what I mean? Yes, that I do. That completely works. Um, it's, it, the first big news coming out of this obviously involves Jonathan Gresham, who lost uh, his Ring of Honor world title in the opening match of Death Before Dishonor. And on a card where we had FTR versus the Briscoes go nearly an hour, and this match here didn't do that. No, it was a, it was a very surprisingly, well, not very short match, but a surprisingly short match given the stature yeah. of the match, I think it's fair to say. Fightful are reporting that Jonathan Gresham apparently had a heated meeting with Tony Khan and others before the show, uh, unhappy with the direction of the booking and his character. Apparently just hours before the show as well, he requested his release from Ring of Honor. And while it was a conversation, this is what Fightful are saying, while it was a conversation behind closed doors many were able to overhear it because it was really loud now you can imagine tony khan being loud just generally yeah, yeah but yeah, if yeah. jonathan gresham's getting angry you can imagine he's going to be loud as well yeah yeah, yeah but more so tony khan fight will continue what told the gresham finally procured a meeting with tony khan before the show he was said to have communicated the frustration was let him cussing out khan several talent confirmed this to fightful following the show and then apparently it's just he he, he aired his grievances to the coaches for the aw coaches the, the producers that might call them in the in the WWE the likes of QT Marshall Christopher Daniels and Son Jay mm -hmm. Dutch but then was only able to speak to Tony Khan uh, a few hours before the event as Jack said earlier oh now that what? sounds well that just sounds like because Sean Ross Sapp did tweet saying like we've heard this is sort of following a pattern of, of talent not being able to pin down Tony and hear back from him or basically it seems like talent relations isn't working that well it seems like it, it was communication issues they put it didn't they so yeah. it, it just seems like they need to hire more people perhaps I don't know how it Maybe. works backstage in AEW but it would appear that there's not enough people to go around mm. for the entire operation to work smoothly um, it's just me speculating like well five full of speculating well no they haven't this is according to their sources but there's a variety of reasons that could possibly explain why Gresham was so aggrieved uh, his journey through Ring of Honor did not match up with what Tony Khan had planned, but for specific reasons, potentially, it could be around losing the championship, the Ring of Honor world title, uh, going on first on the show, the length of the match, which we've said was quite surprisingly short, and his heel turn prior to the event as well. I I can see why Gresham would be annoyed. On one hand, it's it's the booker's job to make the stories, and if you happen to lose in the story, then what can you do? You're losing in the story. On the other hand, it might seem to Jonathan Gresham like he's got this prestigious belt, and then someone's come in, bought out of the company and gone, right, you're losing that in the opening match in about 10 minutes, and there you go. And then you'd, you'd be like, oh, hang on. That is the thing, like, because he's, he's worked wonders around the world over the past couple of yeah. years, getting his name out there and getting the Ring of Honor title on certain shows and in different parts of the world and whatnot. But obviously then we've come in, Tony Khan's purchased the thing and he's gone, Claudio Castagnoli, he's a fairly big name. Mm. We'll give him the title. So if you're going to put in all that work just for it to come to this, mm. I can see why he would be upset. But also, I can also see why Tony wanted to put the belt on Claudio Castagnoli, not just because he yeah, who he yeah, is, yeah. but there's also a good story to be told there about him never winning a world title and this finally being the one where he gets it. If I was Ring of Honor world champion, I'd probably think that oh, I'll be all right with losing it if there's a good story going into it, but this does seem like the build was kind of rushed. It might feel like Tony was just like, Gresham might feel like Tony was just like, let's get the title off him straight away, yeah. give it to Claudio and we're off from there. I, I, I can see why both sides have a grievance there. I'm sure we'll learn more about this situation in the coming days. Mm, Hopefully. Uh, <laughs> Jonathan Gresham is not the only person to have, uh, to have left Ring of Honor. Well, he's requested his release. Someone is gone. And it's uh, it's Tully Blanchard, Ross. Oh, na na. What's me name? It's Prince Nana, who <laughs> was on the uh, Zero Hour uh, kickoff show thingy. I saw that on YouTube. I haven't seen the full show yet, right. but I haven't seen this one there. He cuts a promo. He basically says, I've purchased Tully Blanchard Enterprises. Brian Cage has got the Twitter. It was like, here today, gone tomorrow, while I was wearing a Tully Blanchard Enterprises yes, T-shirt. Yeah. Which is quite funny for Brian Cage to, to be, you know, poking fun at oh, something yeah. out of the way he's gone recently. But it's, uh, yeah, it's really weird how it's come about, because obviously Tully Blanchard debut the stable on AEW very recently we got Brian Cage and then the, the, the Gates of Agony tag mm. team um, but I said they're under under new ownership in, in Prince Nana 
Well, Prince Nolan has a, a, a like an experienced managerial name in the pro wrestling world, so it should be in good hands. But it just totally seems to have gone very suddenly. Yeah, from Ring of Honor it's there. Uh, weird how it's sort of we go back to when there was sort of FTR getting rid of Tully to sort of making overtures to bring in Bret Hart with all the references to Bret Hart. Like I, I remember there was a, a segment with the Young Bucks saying, "Oh, well, we need someone who is the best that there ever was," and all that sort of mm. malarkey. So ever since then, it just seems like Tully's just gone off the face of the earth and he's continued to do that now I don't know what's going on there but no. something else also these stories are linked because Gresham had recently joined the stable oh, yeah, after Gresham, turning yeah. on Lee Moriarty yeah, on AEW I think uh, on Rampage yes yeah. and uh, now he's not going to be presumably in the stable so mm. it's all it's all changed I think this might just be a they might just do a reboot with Nana at the helm yeah. and kind of pretend that Gresham was never in it. I it suppose. is strange what's happened to Tully over the past few months because when he was there, I thought he had great value with the likes of Sean Spears oh, yeah. in the early days of AEW and FTR as well. He brought a real gravitas to proceedings. Mm. He was very serious, man. He's a horse man. Mm, of course. Um, like Billy Gunn. I mean, he's an ass man. <laughs> Uh, also, we're going to take a look at a reason for a star's absence from Death Before Dishonor because the new AEW Dark, uh, the new AEW Dark team, the Truth Busters, which is Arya Davari and Slim J, competed on Zero Hour. But the third member of the team, which was of course Parker Bordreau, mm. uh, Harland. Formerly, formerly Harland in NXT, was absent as well. Why was that, Ross? Just because his debut on AEW Dark hasn't aired yet, so we're going to put the debut on Dark to air and then bring him in for Ring of Honor afterwards. Now that does make sense just logistically but i would suggest that maybe having him make his debut on this show would have been a bigger deal yeah i would assume why is it right to assume more people watch a lot of people watch on yeah. youtube isn't it a lot yeah. of people do watch aw dark but then again this is the the gravitas of a, a ring of honor uh spectacular mm. I, don't know, I don't know what, what their, their buzz term is for a, a pay-per-view event but there you go they might just call it a pay-per-view maybe I think, just yeah. maybe um but i it's uh i don't know what to say there it's gonna happen soon. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm to be fair. I'm excited for it because we've seen that he was a big menacing man. He had the social media clout as well, mm. inexplicably. I'm sure there was a reason. Uh. And um, we were quite excited, just me and Ross on the podcast with Matthew, to see what he went on to do as Harland. And um, now he's getting a fresh start. Because just by the people he knows and the little social media videos you see him put up, it's just like he seems like quite a charismatic fella. Yeah. He seems like quite a, a good laugh to be around. So to see him now, he's got his hair back. So there's one step going back to Brock Lesnar, yes. which I don't think is a weakness to look like Brock Lesnar, no. for goodness sake. So let's see how he talks. When he's with the richest man in the world, Ari Davari. I'm still not all right with that gimmick. Well, he is the richest man in the world. Prince Amin needs to have a word with the him. The pandy was hard on Prince Amin. <laughs> uh, and finally, we take a look at the scrapped plans for a major AEW star's debut. That major AEW star being Claudio Castagnoli. Tony Khan has revealed, Ross, how his debut was actually meant to go. The original plan for him was to debut here, in brackets, a death, be uh, death before dishonor. Uh, it would have been a different build to the pay-per-view than what we did. Originally, my vision when we spoke was for Claudio to come back at Ring of Honor and debut as a mystery wrestler. Whoa. Oh, Gresham, you've got an open challenge. You don't know who your opponent will be. Who will it be? Big Pop AEW special. I also knew that when we spoke, there was a possibility that he would come in as a replacement for Brian at both Forbidden Door and the Blood and Guts match, so everything worked out great. So it seems like what Tony's done there is just kept the mystery opponent concept, but just moved it back a few weeks or a yeah. few months to, yeah. well, a month. To Forbidden Door. In a few days as well, wasn't it? He, he, he appeared on the ramp on, was it Dynamite? I forget, ah, they all blur into one, don't they? He was just mm. like, I'll challenge you, young man. Um, it's all worked out well. Yeah. Well, not for Gresham and them, but for Claudio, it's worked out well, I suppose. It, it would have been interesting to see if Gresham hadn't kicked up a fuss, what story they could have potentially told, because, you yeah, know, surely enough, he's going to get cast to one side and I think he losing might have, one match. I feel like he might have, because now he's become part of this lower card or new stable on the scene I don't think it was looking good I see why you might have felt very disillusioned mm. Mm. as I say hopefully we'll find out more in the coming days absolutely uh, tune in for more news videos later on today on this very channel and leave your thoughts and opinions on this video on all the stories we've covered in the comments section down below thanks very much for watching and we'll see you very soon